300% more durable than traditional ceramic heat shields. Yes, Elon Musk is redrawing the future of aerospace with a revolutionary Starship metal heat shield. This brand new technology, once dismissed by aerospace experts as a fantasy, has now left them totally embarrassed. Let's dive into all of it in today's episode of TechMap. SpaceX is developing a revolutionary metallic heat shield. Lightweight, insanely tough, and far more reusable than anything we've seen before. It's promised to be 300% more effective than current ceramic heat shields. If that's true, this isn't just innovation. It's a direct challenge to the entire aerospace industry. What the big aerospace players once dismissed as pure fantasy, SpaceX is turning into reality. It's Elon Musk's crazy ideas that are breaking through the noise, changing everything we thought we knew about material science and spacecraft design. Kind of like the early 1900s, when the whole world believed that humans could never fly like birds, the Wright brothers quietly built the first airplane, opening the door to a golden age of aviation that we're still living in today. All right, back to the main question. What exactly is this new metal heat shield we're talking about? SpaceX has taken a completely different approach. They didn't just tweak the old designs, they reimagined the heat shield from the ground up. Stainless steel, yeah, the same kind of metal you've got in your kitchen drawer, but they've pushed it to a whole new level. Just like the current ceramic tiles, these metal ones are also shaped into hexagons. That design helps avoid straight gaps where hot plasma could sneak through spreads the forces more evenly, and makes assembly easier. But here's the real twist. Unlike ceramics, these metal tiles use that special system SpaceX is testing, called transpiration cooling. Sounds a little technical, right? Let me break it down for you. They've added tiny microscopic holes to the stainless steel plates, which allow liquid or fuels to seep through. When things heat up, that liquid turns into vapor, forming a protective layer. You could call it transpiration cooling. The metal basically cools itself while creating an extra thermal buffer between the spacecraft and the hellish heat of re-entry. This metal heat shield outperforms traditional ceramic tiles by up to 300% when it comes to thermal efficiency. I mean, it's tougher and handles heat way better. Three times better, to be exact. What's even more impressive is that it doesn't weigh much more than the ceramic system and the production cost. Just a tenth of what ceramics cost. So how's that even possible? It all comes down to physics and some material properties that aerospace engineers have been overlooking for decades. Now we all know that metal conducts heat really fast, which, by traditional spacecraft standards, sounds like a terrible idea for a heat shield. But SpaceX has cleverly turned that so-called weakness into a strength. Here's how it works. As the metal heats up during re-entry, thermal sensors kick in and trigger a system that pushes water or methane, stored behind the tiles, through those tiny micro-holes. The moment that liquid hits the superheated surface, it evaporates instantly. That creates continuous cooling through two powerful physical effects. First, the phase change from liquid to gas sucks up a ton of heat. And second, that vapor forms a protective barrier that shields the spacecraft from the intense heat outside. This mechanism is kind of like how our own bodies sweat. When your body heats up, whether from exercise, stress, or just a hot day, it releases sweat through tiny pores in your skin. Same idea here. The metal heat shield sweats through microscopic holes, cooling itself down in a super efficient way. And that's something traditional ceramic tiles simply can't do. This fundamental shift in thinking has led to a shocking 300% boost in performance, something that's turning heads across the entire aerospace industry. Yeah, the ceramic heat shield on Starship looks like it's doing the job for now, but let's be real it still falls short of what Elon Musk is really going for. In an interview with Everyday Astronaut last year, Musk shared some insightful thoughts on the current state of heat shields. He pointed out that while ceramic heat shield tiles are useful, they still have their flaws, and the full reusability of Starship hasn't been achieved yet. The problem is a tough one to solve, 
because no one has successfully created a heat shield that can handle the extreme re-entry temperatures and be reused right away for the next flight. Let's break down some of the serious problems these ceramic tiles are dealing with. First off, these things are insanely expensive and time-consuming to make. They're designed to handle temperatures over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The tiles are made from advanced ceramic materials, usually silica-based, or sometimes something even more complex like TUFROC, which stands for Toughened Unipiece Fibrous Reinforced Oxidation Resistant Ceramic. That's the same kind of stuff used on military spacecraft, like the Boeing X-37. These materials have to be engineered on a microscopic level to get the right balance of toughness, crack resistance, and insulation. TUFROC, if that's what SpaceX is using, has a density of around 400 kilograms per cubic meter. That's heavier than the old silica tiles from NASA's space shuttle which came in at about 250 kilograms per cubic meter, but it's also more durable and heat resistant. Making these ceramic tiles isn't like pressing bricks in a factory. It takes high temperature ovens, specialized shaping techniques to create that hexagon form, and extremely precise manufacturing. Each tile has to be able to survive the hell of re-entry without cracking or falling apart. And yeah, all that complexity adds up to time and money. Second, putting on 18,000 ceramic tiles is no small feat. Each tile is about 9.5 inches wide, 1.3 inches thick, and the whole heat shield weighs somewhere between 5 to 8 tons. They attach the tiles with steel bolts or special glue, and in some spots, they need extra padding. Even though SpaceX uses robots to speed things up, it's still a slow process, especially if the tiles are damaged or missing and need to be replaced. This slows down turnaround times and raises costs, making it harder to reuse Starship quickly and efficiently. Third, even though they're made from advanced materials like silica-based ceramics or TUFROC, the tiles are still prone to cracking or falling off due to vibrations during launch or the extreme heat during re-entry, up to 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit. Tests, like the IFT-4 flight, showed that some tiles were damaged, requiring checks and replacements. SpaceX upgraded the tiles, making them twice as durable, and added an ablative layer for extra protection. But there's still a risk that even one missing tile could cause major damage to the spacecraft's body. Moreover, traditional ceramic tiles work purely through insulation. They absorb a lot of heat, but transfer it very slowly. Think of them like the thermal blanket of a spacecraft. The problem is, they're passive systems with no way to release the built-up heat, other than gradually radiating it away. On the other hand, using a metal heat shield solves all these problems. Because it's made from stainless steel, it's incredibly cheap, ranging from $2,500 to $3,200 per ton, depending on the type. If you use 316 stainless steel, it'll be about 10% more expensive. Plus, it can withstand extreme temperatures without deforming. However, many space enthusiasts predicted Musk would fail spectacularly when he announced plans to use stainless steel heat shields on spacecraft, arguing that the extreme temperatures in orbit would make it melt like butter. Musk simply responded with a video showing them using a flame torch on the steel, which is said to be the material used for the metal heat shields later on. This left NASA engineers stunned. For decades, they had never considered using metal like stainless steel for heat shields. Instead, they relied on materials like carbon phenolic, a type of plastic used for heat shields on the Mercury Redstone 3, and ceramics used for the heat shields on the Space Shuttle. What's even more jaw-dropping to aerospace giants is that SpaceX pulled this off for under $50 million pennies compared to NASA's massive spending on developing the heat shields for the space shuttle, which included costly thermal tiles and advanced composite materials. Finally, they joined the race, launching a new research program focused on discovering materials for the future. Last year, NASA invested in four U.S. companies to research GRX-810, a material that can be 3D printed, withstand extreme temperatures, and endure the harsh conditions of air and space travel.
with the potential to bring commercial profit. NASA engineers designed GRX-810 for aerospace applications, including rocket engine injectors, combustion chambers, turbines, heat shields, and heat-resistant parts capable of withstanding temperatures above 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This move indirectly aligns with SpaceX's view that metal heat shields are completely feasible. Well, the real story here isn't that the idea itself is new or groundbreaking. It's not. What's revolutionary is that SpaceX had the guts to rethink everything and actually apply these old principles at full scale in a real spacecraft. That's something the traditional aerospace world, with all its caution and red tape, never dared to take seriously. So, is this one bold innovation enough to carry SpaceX all the way to Mars? Of course it is. Why not? It's not about just landing on Mars and doing flags and footprints. Um, it's about creating a self-sustaining uh, city on Mars. Musk spoke in a recent TV interview, doubling down on his vision. He's not just thinking about a short visit. He's determined to establish a permanent human presence on the Red Planet. And the metal heat shield plays a huge role in this mission. SpaceX backed this up in a post last year. We recently tested heat shield materials in a simulated Martian atmosphere as we aim to launch the first starships to Mars in 2026. And from the test images, it's clear they're working with metal, most likely stainless steel. Why steel? Because it's far more durable than ceramics. It's tougher, more impact resistant, and stands up better against micrometeoroids or floating debris in space. That durability means fewer chances of damage during the long, harsh journey to Mars. Stainless steel components can be produced using relatively simple manufacturing methods. Any damage can be easily repaired with basic welding tools. Tools that could actually be available in a Mars colony. And the best part? The evaporative cooling system can be recharged and reused between each use. But here's where it gets even more impressive. On Mars missions, the same heat shield system that's used for re-entry could be repurposed to manage heat during surface operations. So instead of just being dead weight, the heat shield becomes a versatile piece of infrastructure with multiple uses. Starship designed to carry at least 100 tons on each reflight. Even the upgraded Starship version 3, which can handle up to 200 tons thanks to its larger fuel tanks and the powerful thrust of 33 Raptor 3 engines generating 17 million pounds of thrust. This trade-off can be accepted, especially if it means successfully transporting cargo to Mars and safely returning to Earth. In the end, SpaceX has shown us that the limits we accept are often just a product of our collective imagination. The real question isn't whether humans can get to Mars, but when? That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.